Hi, I'm Tim Van Mill again from Apogee Components. Today I want to talk to you about the smallest um, dual deployment altimeter that we carry, which is the Altus Metrum Easy Mini. You can see it is very small. Um, it has a little beeper on one side. There's a pressure sensor in here somewhere. I think it's this one here. And it also has a little USB port. Now this USB port is for transferring data only. It's not for charging any batteries. Um, so be, be aware of that. Uh, speaking of batteries, there's two ways to power this thing. Uh, one is with a 9-volt battery, and we have a 9-volt battery connector if you need one. Um, and that is hooked up to the battery port which is right here. It's, the, it's this terminal block um, and then you'll put the batteries in the right polarity. So um, the red would go in the positive and the black would go in the negative. And you just put it in and you take a little screwdriver and you screw it down. So I'll, do, I'll just show you how this is done. So you put the red in and you put your black in. Screw that down and that's how you hook it up. Uh, the other way to power it is not with this, but with a LiPo battery, lithium polymer. Um, and Altus Metrum sells two different versions. There's the, the bigger one, the 900 mi uh, milliamp hour and the 400 milliamp hour. So what you do for these is you just plug it into the little port here on the back of the altimeter. See that little port right there? You just plug that in and then you're powered up. Now to charge these batteries, you need a special battery charger. Not any regular battery charger is going to work um, because these are special batteries. Most LiPo batteries have circuitry built into the battery itself. Um, basically what this is, is a, like a circuit breaker. Um, when it feels like too much current is going out, it trips the circuit breaker. Um, that works good for most electronic devices, but for doing dual deployment, we want to dump all the current as, as fast as powerful, hitting, hitting the igniter so that we're sure we're going to fire off the igniter. Um, so these batteries, that little circuit breaker has been removed, and because of that, it needs a special charger. And Altus Metrum sells this little charger right here, and it's powered by a USB cord. So you're going to need to get a special, um, well, it's not a special, it's a regular micro USB connector. Uh, we do sell these, but you check your camera bag. Your camera might have the same one. And you plug it into one side. Get it in the right way, and it'll go in. Um, and it's got a little switch on it. And the little switch on the back of the board will tell you for charging at uh, 100 microamps or 500. Um, and that's the rate at which it puts power into the battery. For the small battery, you want to go to the 100. And for the 900 uh, milliamp hour battery, you go to the uh, 500. Uh, so then I got a little USB charger here, so I'll just plug that in. Um, and when you turn it on, you get a little, um, kind of like a yellowish light, kind of orange. It gets uh, yellow and red lights come on, telling you you got power there. And then you just plug in your battery into the other side. Okay, so this battery's charged because I got a green light. Um, so when you know it's charged when it turns green. I'll pull that out. I'll put this one in. Uh, this one's not been charged. So now I just got a red light indicating that it's charging. And it will charge when it turns green. Um, the battery's charged. So. That's how you charge them. You need that special battery charger. Okay, uh, hooking up the altimeter. Um, for it to do anything, it needs the switch. Um, and we sell switches. This is just a regular push button switch. We sell these. Um, you can use rotary switches, whatever kind of switch you need or you have, it will work. Um, I like this because I can just take a screwdriver go through a hole inside of the rocket, push the switch, turn on my altimeter, and, and it's, I've been using these for several years now and they work really well. Um, and then you have to put it into the right connector on the altimeter and you'll see switch right there. Um, this one is not polarity sensitive. 
So I'll just put it in, screw it down, and put the other one in, screw it down. Um, now your igniters will go, um, there's two terminal blocks for those. You got the main, which is your main parachute, which is the second one that's deployed. And then you, on the other side you have Apogee. The Apogee will be at the peak of the flight. That's when we want that one to deploy. And you can put that in there. Now right out of the, the box, when you get this, it's already preset to deploy the main parachute at 250 meters above the ground level, which is about 820 feet. So if, if that works for you, you can just take it out of the package, put it in to your rocket, and fly it, um, and then it should work just fine for you. If you want data back, then you're going to want to uh, plug in to a USB cable and plug it into your computer and download the software, and I'll go over that in a little bit. Right now, I got two igniters installed plus a switch. And when I hook up my battery, things should be powered up. Okay, so I need to just turn on my switch. And when I do that, you're going to hear a series of beeps. And I'll go over what those beeps mean. So I'm going to turn it on. Okay, I'm not getting anything, which means that either I'm not plugged in properly or my. Oh, there it is. My switch came undone. You have to have a switch in there. Now, if you don't have a switch, you can just take a piece of bare wire and go from one side to the other. That basically turns it on. Okay, so did you hear that? that was, I, I just turned it off. There's going to be more beeps, but that was the first set. There was four beeps and then a pause, and then one more beep. And what this tells me is the, the battery voltage. So that's 4.1 volts. So let's hear that again. Four, one. So that's our battery voltage. Okay, and then there was a, a second and third set of beeps, and these were really quick. Um, <clears throat> and for this, you're going to go to the user's manual, and it's going to tell you what those beeps mean. This is in Chapter 5 of the User's Manual. Um, that second set of beeps, it's actually Morse code, and it's a letter. And if you understand Morse code, maybe you picked it up. If you don't, all the letters are right here. Um, typically, on this altimeter, you're going to get um, either idle or pad. Um, and what we heard was pad, because we have everything hooked up, and we're not hooked up to a computer. And it can sense when it's hooked up to the computer. And if it's hooked up to the computer, it'll be in idle mode, and we'll get an I um, Morse code, which is dit dit, and that stands for idle. Since we're not hooked up to the computer, we're getting pad mode. Pad mode is dit da da dit. So let's hear that again. This is battery voltage. Okay, so that was um, our pad mode. And then the final series of, of beeps is telling us how many igniters are hooked up. And if you, if you kind of recall, there was three little short beeps, dit, dit, dit. Um, and if you go to the next page in your uh, user's manual, the three little dit, dit, dits tell me that both igniters are installed. Um, so depending how many igniters you have is what those, that final series of, of beeps is going to sound like. So that was three dits. So let's hear that one more time, and then I'll remove an igniter, and we'll, we'll hear what that sounds like. This is pad mode. Dit, dit, dit. Okay, so that tells me that there's two igniters installed. So I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to remove the Apogee igniter. I'm just going to unscrew it, pull it out. Okay, I'll turn it back on. And this time, since uh, we don't have both, we just have main, so we should hear dit dit. So let's hear dit dit. Dit dit. Okay, so that tells me which igniters are hooked up. 
All right, so at this point, you, you could go ahead and launch the rocket and it should do a dual deployment. Um, and I'm going to pause this video here and then I'm going to come back into the next video and we'll do a test and then we'll hook it up to the computer and see what the data looks like after the flight. So my name again is Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop and we'll come right back and you can come back to the Apogee website anytime at www.apogeerockets.com.